Now let me tell you a secret. Lean in a little bit. Let me tell you something. Are you listening? Do you want to lose weight? Are you inspired by me losing 65 pounds? Would you like to do that? Do you want to know the truth? Do you really want to know the secret to losing weight? Oh, I think I'm going to name this video The Secret to Losing Weight. Well, let me tell you, the secret to losing weight, the secret to losing weight is this. Oh, hello everybody and welcome to another edition of What's Going On at Club Fred. Today is day nine of my refeeding after my fabulous 75 day water fasting adventure. Today, I am making keto meatballs, super sized, great big, beautiful meatballs. And they're made in the tradition of my late father-in-law who used to boil his meatballs in a pound of butter. And I will also show you what I ate today for my refeed in my one hour OMAD, one meal a day. So let's get started. So let's move on to what I ate today and I hope that you enjoy looking at it as much as I enjoyed eating it. Yay! Would you just look at this breakfast? Blue cheese, bacon, asparagus spears, avocado, cherry tomato, salmon, three egg omelet topped with mushrooms and fried onions, mixed garden salad with absolutely everything you could ever imagine, including feta cheese, homemade strawberry dressing, Pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, raisins, cottage cheese and green apple, lemon water, sauerkraut, kimchi, 
coffee with real cream, heavy cream and whiskey. Homemade dressing. Mm.
Now, as you can see, I put a little bit of oats in the meatballs, and that is not keto, okay? I did that just so all of you guys could lose your shit. But seriously, I just had a little bit of oatmeal left. I don't personally care if I'm totally keto. It's a hell of a lot of meatballs. I'm going to freeze them and just take one out a day or when I feel like I'm going to eat a meatball. So I just wanted to put a little bit of oats in it. So don't worry, if you want to be strictly keto, don't do that. And also, onions have carbs. And so if you don't, if you really want to be strict about it, take it out. But that's a half an onion in about, well, let me count those meatballs and I'll be right back. Twelve. There's twelve meatballs. So there's a half an onion divided by twelve. Um, that's not going to be a lot of carbs in those meatballs and even the same thing for that little bit of oatmeal I just wanted to add a little bit of flavor because you know that's a lot of meat and um, I just want to make sure that those things are going to be tasty and uh, so you notice what I did is I took some of those uh, pork uh, fat snacks and I put that in my little food blender little KitchenAid stem blender that I um, I did a little unboxing and I'll and I'll add that to a video sometime and I'm quite happy with this product. Um, you saw how this attachment goes on the end of the little food processor, this little thing here, and that worked really really well for that. And also I use it um, with this with this end, and I mix up my uh, my dressings. So let's check out those meatballs. I hope they don't fall apart when I turn them around. That's the main issue I was concerned about, is that they hold together and that they don't get a great big flat spot on the bottom. I started turning a few of them around, but then I thought I should wait a little bit till they're a little bit more cooked. So they're just sitting there boiling in. That's a pound of butter, and I also added a bunch of um, bacon grease. I always render my bacon grease and run it through a little filter and put it in a jar in the fridge. That looks just delightful. I'm going to really enjoy that. That's a little slim gas burner that I bought because I'm camping out in a garage. I do have access to a kitchen but I like having my own space for being creative. These uh, take a little gas can and um, I'm really happy with this. This is a Japanese made little burner. It's very slim, it's light, and uh, it's great for what I'm doing. Um, I have a, a invection burner 
behind that one and it doesn't work with this large fry pan because this large fry pan is not the right metal for that. I have a cast iron on there that I cooked the asparagus this morning for my breakfast. Anyway, so that little burner works great. I love using fire for cooking because fire is uh, immediately adjustable for temperature and I just it just seems more natural to me. The weather here is starting to warm up and it's starting to get a little bit warm inside and um, that's not really conducive to cooking or creating extra heat in your living space. What I like to do is batch cook. I cook a lot of food at the same time and I reduce the amount of actual uh, time, hours, minutes spent slaving over a burner or a stove. Um, I, I just like to cook a, a fair bit. Even those omelets that I eat in the morning, you, that's in that same frying pan that I'm making the meatballs in right now. It's a large fry pan and I cook uh, 12 eggs at a time and I just cut that up into quarters and I eat that over four days and I just warm it up. No biggie to me. Um, I don't really notice the difference and it doesn't matter to me. I know you can cook an omelet really fast, but to me, I've got so much variety going on. I've got so many things going on in my meal that um, I just it just speeds things up. And uh, the same thing, I cook a pound of bacon at a time and the last time I even thought maybe I should cook too because I think I eat about a third of that every day. So basically I need to cook a pound of bacon every three days. I'm gonna cook up some sausages also and put in the freezer. So now, uh, you know, if I, if I do a what I ate video again, you, at some point you're gonna see some of those meatballs showing up on my plate. Um, I ate a lot of food again today. And also, the weird thing is, I had a NSV, which is a non-scale victory, in as much as I put my tight pants on and they're not really very tight. And the mystery is that when I weighed myself this morning, I'm 199. And that is a real big weight gain over yesterday because yesterday I was 197.4 and I feel less bloated, less swollen, even my legs are less swollen. I don't know where that weight is. It doesn't make sense because when I woke up, I thought, I'm going to weigh myself, and this time I'm going to see a weight loss. Yesterday I was 197.4, and I thought, mm, it, you know, it, because, well, actually I went down from, today's Sunday, I went down from Friday, my weight went down, and then today, Sunday, it went back up, and it just makes absolutely no sense. So what I've learned is that the scale isn't the only indicator of what's going on, with uh, your body, and so I reached for those pants that uh, that are a good gauge for me of what's going on with my weight and my body, and I put them on, and they felt good. They didn't feel excessively tight, they, so basically, to me, they were a non-scale victory. So uh, I've eaten this way now for nine days. Uh, the first few days weren't exactly like they are now, and I just kind of wanted to see what's going to happen, how things balance out, especially in regards to water weight, I guess, and also just, um, I guess, food moving through my body. So right now, I'm not going to change my eating regimen just because I don't want to. I'm just enjoying it too much. I feel great. Again, I'm just kind of listening to my body. My clothes fit good. I feel great. You know, and one of the, one of the um, altruistic benefits of that whole thing is that people treat me differently when I go around town. People are willing to engage me. They like to talk to me. They smile at me. Whereas when I was fat, I was virtually invisible. Um, some people asked me if my colleagues at school had noticed that I'd lost weight. And I would say initially no. What they just did is they noticed me. Do you get that? They didn't notice specifically that I lost weight. If they did, they didn't say anything. But they just noticed me. Let that sink in. 
So what I noticed is, but I think, and partially, it's not just them, it's me, because I started feeling more confident, smiling, but I'm also responding to cues that people are giving me. So I notice they're, they're receiving me in a more, and they're viewing me in a more favorable light, and I'm responding to that because in our human relationships, in our contacts with others, they are mirrors and they help us view ourselves. So when we feel good about ourselves, we reflect that off of them, they reflect it back, and it's, uh, it's empowering, and there's synergy there, and, and, it, and it just builds. And so you start to realize people are, are you know, they're gonna smile back at you when you smile. So you start to raise your head up and you start to smile. And so, you know, I can't, I can't express to you how significant the psychological benefits of losing weight are way beyond the physiological benefits, which are huge. Because you cannot be psychologically healthy, mentally fit, if you're not physically fit. Do you get that? You can't be mentally healthy mentally fit if you're not physically fit and it doesn't matter about how much confidence you have confidence is not just in your head if you're in total denial um, you can hold it off for a while but you're going to read the way people respond to you and like I said people respond to fat in a negative way and I, I do too. I did it to myself in as much as there was negative self-talk, there was a low self-image, and because I've been so focused on hating my own fat, and now I see people that are so obese, and what occurs to me is that a huge portion of our health problems in our society today is related to poor nutrition, overeating, and obesity. And the cure, the fix, is just so simple. Now let me tell you a secret. Lean in a little bit. Let me tell you something. Are you listening? Do you want to lose weight? Are you inspired by me losing 65 pounds? Would you like to do that? Do you want to know the truth? Do you really want to know the secret to losing weight? Oh, I think I'm going to name this video The Secret to Losing Weight. Well, let me tell you. The secret to losing weight. The secret to losing weight is this. Stop eating. Stop eating. Just stop. Someone asked me, how, how did you get fat? And I think there's some legitimate things 
in my metabolism and my makeup that were different than some people. Some people just, they try to gain weight, they can't gain weight. So there is something there. And it's, it's also resting in our microbiome, I know it is. But ultimately the truth of why I was fat I ate too much. The truth of why I was fat is I ate too much. And the cure It's so dumb to state the obvious. <laughs> I was fat. I have been over 270 pounds. I started my fast at almost 260 pounds. But the thing is, the reason I was fat is just because I put too much food in my pie hole. I ate too much. And the cure is the opposite eat less or just stop eating and guess what I went 75 days and I didn't die and I lost over 60 pounds and now for nine days I'm still under 200 and I started at 257.4 pounds Ah, but I could never do that, Fred. Are you kidding me? What, stop eating? Are you kidding? <laughs> I could never do that. And to you, I say, yes, absolutely. You are absolutely right. You can't do it. You won't be able to do it. Cruel? Not really. What it is is this. If you think you can you're right. And if you think you can't, you're right. You're still right. So if you think you can't, you won't. This fasting that I did is the easiest hard thing that I've ever done. The first three days are the hardest. Without a, without a doubt, they're the hardest. I just moped around. I was, I was a slug. I took ibuprofen for headaches. I even had a little bit of Valium to help me sleep. Do what you have to do to get past those three days. By day six or seven, you feel like you have mental superpowers. You have mental clarity that you've never seen in your, in your entire life. And, and there's, there's, just such, there's just such amazing uh, feelings that you get as you progress through an extended fast. And then when you do your refeed, the whole experience of that is just so most excellent in every way. So that's just a whole other thing to look forward to. And now I'm fasting 23 hours a day. And last night when I was in bed and I had this feeling that I would have recognized in the past as hunger. And I liked it. It felt good because I liked it, it felt good because there was a parallel, there is a parallel feeling that I get and it is this feeling that is 
the opposite of what you would have felt when you were overeating, which is bloated, perhaps even the kinds of things you might experience from irritable bowel, maybe gas, uh, maybe diarrhea symptoms, or but just a tight belly, just tight pants, and and you have this kind of empty feeling in your body, you can pull in your belly, you can suck it in and, and it feels good. And so when you do an extended fast, you have actually reprogrammed your psychological response and the way you think about hunger about that feeling that you have fed your entire life since you were a baby. As soon as you were hungry, someone put food in your mouth and you have learned to respond to the feeling of hunger with food in a almost crisis mode if you've gone 8, 10, 12 hours without food due to a busy day and you say, oh my God, I am so starving. If I don't eat, I'm going to die. And you feel, you, you, you actually kind of feel like that because that hunger feeling was growing. But what you don't even realize is because you've never pushed it beyond a certain limit unless you've unless you've had some real rare circumstances in your life, you have never ever experienced the fact that at a certain point, at that sort of point, oh my God, I'm going to die if I don't eat. At that point, it doesn't grow exponentially anymore. And if you start to reprogram your response to that physiological feeling of hunger and you start changing your thought process in regards to that. So you start telling yourself when you're in bed at night and you feel hungry and you feel like you're gonna die so you're gonna go down and raid the fridge. Instead you say to yourself, Hello, hunger. Hello, this feeling of hunger. Come on in. Let's sit down and get to know each other. Oh, hunger, you are my friend. When you are here, I am in a good place. I am working towards better health. I am in a good spot because you, hunger, are here in my room, in my house, and you are my friend. And I don't want to kick you out, so let me embrace you. Come along beside me, hunger, and let's lock arms together and let's be kindred spirits. And so you start to think about hunger differently by reprogramming your physiological response and you start saying, oh my gosh, hunger is here, come on in and I'm so happy you're here. And then you realize that you have power over hunger and hunger is not a dragon that you need to slay but a pet or a friend you need to nurture and so it's a mind warp hunger the feeling of hunger and the whole food thing and eating, the whole thing is a mind warp and it starts 
in your head. So I don't think it's maybe perhaps it's not possible to just do it all at once. That's why some people struggle with it more than others and that's you have to get yourself to that place and you have to reprogram your brain. It's how you view the whole thing and you have to you have to push reset and when you do you you begin okay so first you begin by reprogramming the way you think about food so you're resetting your psychological approach to food and hunger and after that you embark on a fasting adventure whereby you are resetting your physiological, your physical body, and you're resetting your microbiome in your body because you're starving out all of the bad bacterias. And your entire immune system rests inside your microbiome Think about that. So you're resetting your immune system. And when you come back to the world of food, your body is going to process that food differently because your microbiome now is reset. And so is your immune system. One of the significant health benefits that I have achieved is I, I, I no longer have depression and I no longer have anxiety and anxiety itself can be debilitating. It's when you start to overthink everything Oh my God, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do this. And you start thinking about it. And it basically is like too much impetus, too much velocity going through the pipes of your thoughts. And it clogs everything up to the point of you become frozen in inaction from overthinking. And I don't have that anymore. I feel so good and I feel so physically and mentally happy. Well, let's check on those meatballs. They look great. They're holding together really nicely. They're just boiling in butter and bacon grease but I think there's also liquid that came out of the meat itself I'm gonna turn up the heat just a little bit I would like any moisture that's in this grease to come out so basically I'm just frying these they look great quite happy with that what do you think You can see now that they're just frying, that there's only grease left. There's no more water left in the pan.
one thing I'm so struck with is how much time I spend on food in any given day. Today is Sunday. I'm prepping a lot of food for the future, uh, the meatballs, the omelette that I'm making here that you will see. Um, but it's striking how much time I spend, even in respect of the fact that I'm only eating one meal a day. Now granted that meal is a lot of variety and thankfully I am a foodie in as much as I enjoy working with food. Food is joy. Food is not just pleasure for eating but food is joy because it's fun to work with food. It's fun to cook. It's fun to play with food. It's fun to be creative. You can express yourself and, and be an individual with how you deal with your food. And so I'm so glad that I've made friends with food and you must make friends with food because food is essential for your life. You may as well enjoy the process, learn about it, learn how the ingredients interact together to make everything so delicious and enjoy food, not just eating it, but cooking it enjoy being at home it's a pleasure when you can share that with someone else there's no need to go out and spend so much money buying food prepared by others when you can enjoy that and make it an activity make it fun involve your family involve your spouse involve your children food is joy
Well, that just about wraps up things for this video today. You know, when I first started documenting my fasting journey on this channel, I wasn't really all that comfortable. I was a little bit hesitant to put myself in front of the camera, but I have to say I've been enjoying it. I've also been appreciative of the feedback of everybody, and I'm aware that sharing my story is helpful and beneficial, and that helps spurn me on. I hope it's obvious that I'm putting some effort into my videos and they are improving. Now, I just want you to know that if you ever hope to do anything on YouTube and monetize, you need to have 1,000 subscribers, and right now I have maybe around 150. I don't even think it's possible to ever achieve 1,000. However, that being said, there is nothing wrong with a goal, and that's why I ask you, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe because it helps boost my channel and if I can get up to a thousand subscribers I can actually make a couple of dollars while I'm doing something that I enjoy at the same time. So until next time love yourself be safe and stay awesome. my rhubarb I harvested here about three or four times already I've got some kale I've got kale in behind here but it, I guess it doesn't get enough Sun as the front ones I have a little basil plant here is doing quite nice this is my tomato plant I've got some nice cherry tomatoes coming here beautiful I have to be careful to water this every day right now. And I've got a, a, a couple of mixed plants in here. One is for bigger tomatoes and one is for cherry tomatoes. So let's check out those meatball. Let's check 